Dear students, welcome back. So this is Dr. Radhika Kannan, your community medicine educator on the Medicos community platform. So today again we will be discussing on uh, the respiratory infections, the communicable diseases. So we will be discussing on uh, the index TB guidelines for extra pulmonary tuberculosis. Then we will be discussing the national strategic plan for TB which is from 2017 to 25, the pillars on which is, it, is built, it is built and also we will have a small discussion on the IMNCI guidelines for pneumonia in children. Okay, so without a delay, let's go to the slides. So first of all, extra pulmonary tuberculosis. So you know that uh, when tuberculosis affects other organs other than the lungs, it's called extra pulmonary and the usual organs that get affected are the meninges, lymph nodes, cutaneous tuberculosis, abdominal tuberculosis, genitourinary. Then there can also be a TB of the pleura or pericardium the intraocular TB and also miliary forms of TB. So this genitourinary TB is nowadays becoming very common especially among females okay because it's becoming a common cause of infertility also so this can come up as a question. Genitourinary TB is a hot spot area where uh, questions can be uh, asked again and again. So these are all examples of extra pulmonary tuberculosis. So when you're talking about going into the diagnostic algorithm of each of these extra pulmonary TB the samples taken will be different according to the site of TB. So for example, for meninges, the samples taken will be CSF. For lymph node, it will be the lymph node aspirate and so on. But the diagnostic test will usually be the CBNAT itself. So you can see the there is an example that I have put up that is the diagnostic algorithm for a case of lymph node tuberculosis. So when there is enlargement of the lymph node along with the systemic symptoms, you know that uh, we will be taking an FNAC or an aspirate from the lymph node which you can see in the uh, flow chart and this FNAC as or the lymph node aspirate will be sent for CBNAT testing okay CBNAT testing so again according to whether it's positive or negative uh, the treatment will be decided okay and again if the lymph node biopsy is indicated that also can be done and uh, according to the results again according to the results the treatment will be as per a pulmonary TB itself that is whether it's drug resistant or drug sensitive TB will be identified and accordingly the treatment will be given but the duration of treatment might be a little uh, different for each of the uh, TB according to the site. So uh, what I wanted to stress is that uh, CBNAT is a basic test that will be done for any sample sent from any extra pulmonary tuberculosis but uh, remember that expert and um, that uh, rifampicin assay are the adjuncts in diagnosis especially for lymph node tuberculosis and TB meningitis and uh, the treatment algorithm again will be dependent on whether the, uh, the TB is drug sensitive or drug resistant. So uh, under the guidelines given by the uh, TB division there is a different flow chart for each of the ex extra pulmonary tuberculosis which you can refer. Again I told you the treatment regimen for extra pulmonary tuberculosis is same like pulmonary TB that is we will first decide whether it is a drug sensitive case of tuberculosis or a drug resistant case and then go about the treatment. So that is the first thing whether it be pulmonary or extra pulmonary deciding or identifying whether the case is drug sensitive or drug resistant is the most important or the key concept in uh, TB treatment now because the issue that we are facing today is basically the drug resistance with respect to uh, resistance to the first line and the second line drugs. Okay, uh, then another important point is that when there is brain or bone involvement in extra pulmonary TB, more extended treatment is required. So, uh, if it's usually a 6 month regimen, it might be extended to 9 months or 10 months according to the involvement of other organs like bone or brain. So, that is again important. So, TB meningitis, please remember the ATT regimen will have to be taken for 9 months and if it's a lymph node or an abdominal tuberculosis, again, usual uh, regimen of 6 months. So, you know that for drug sensitive tuberculosis, we had discussed in the last class, if you have seen my video, the uh, intensive phase and the continuous phase will be for 2 months and 4 months respectively. 
so total of six months so that is a similar case for lymph node and abdominal tuberculosis but when it comes to tb meningitis it is a little longer so nine to ten months of regimen will have to be taken so again this is clinician decided okay so that's an important point this is clinician decided the clinician feels that it needs to be taken a little longer that is allowed then HIV negative patients with TB meningitis and pericarditis, they have to take steroids along with the TB regimen for a period of four weeks. Okay, so this is uh, again a hot point or an important point with respect to the upcoming uh, MCQ exam. Okay, so taking steroids, it can be dexamethasone or prednisolone according to the guidelines. So if the patient is HIV negative and the patient has TB meningitis and pericarditis, they have to take steroids along with ATT. Okay, so that is about extra pulmonary tuberculosis. We discussed about which are the organs, usual organs affected. I told you genitourinary is the most common. That's again a, uh, an important area for question. Then there are diagnostic algorithm for each of the extra pulmonary tuberculosis. And uh, the only difference will be the algorithms will be mainly regarding the sample that is taken. And usually the CBNAT testing or the expert uh, testing uh, will be done okay and then finally treatment will be decided on whether the extra pulmonary tuberculosis is drug sensitive or drug resistant and remember for TB meningitis uh, and also if there's involvement of bone the treatment is longer than the usual pulmonary tuberculosis it will be up to nine months uh, for example in TB meningitis so that is about extra pulmonary tuberculosis Moving on to the national strategic plan for TB, that is 2017 to 25. This was uh, brought about with the vision of uh, getting a TB free India with zero deaths, diseases and poverty due to TB. So that is the ultimate vision of this program and as you can see uh, the goals are the steps that are taken to achieve this. So to achieve the rapid decline in the burden of TB mortality. Uh, burden of TB is morbidity and mortality while working towards elimination of TB in India by 2025. So this is the goal of the National Strategic Plan. Uh, it's, it's important it can come up for exam again. Elimination of TB by 2025. That is the goal of the National Strategic Plan 2017-25. Okay and it's important that you remember that a National Strategic Plan is built on the on four pillars that is detect treat prevent and build okay so detect treat prevent and build these are the four strategic pillars on which national strategic plan or this program is built so first of all detect means early identification of the presumptive cases and prompt treatment or prompt diagnosis so detecting means you are not you're not going to miss out any cases of TB. So early identification of the presumptive cases and as soon as you identify, you send them for your diagnostic algorithm. So that is what comes in detect. Okay. Next is treat. So again, treatment means sustainable treatment and equitable access to high quality TB treatment. So equitable means those who needs more will get more. Those who needs less care will get uh, the care according to their needs. The care and treatment will be divided. So that is what came up in the treatment pillar. Next is prevention. So prevention means preventing the emergence of TB in susceptible to population. So the vulnerable population, the people of the migrants, people living in construction areas, those people who are focused and the emergence of TB in susceptible population should be prevented. That is the third pillar. And the last one is to build. That is critical the management reforms that are brought about. For example, the public-private partnership in uh, TB that is uh, stressed on now. So the private sector is also, also forced or um, is invited to participate in the TB elimination program. Only then we can achieve our goal of uh, eliminating TB by 2025. So the public-private partnership to improve the efficiency and effectiveness is what is the uh, what is meant by the pillar of building. Okay, so building the management reforms and the administration as such. So treat, detect, prevent and build. So there are, uh, the, according to the guidelines, there are a lot of uh, uh, 
plans as to how they go about detecting so finding all drug sensitive and drug resistant cases by like increasing the diagnosis sensitivity universal testing of drug resist for drug resistant tb so all these are how they do that uh, or strengthen the pillar first pillar of detection then in the in case of treatment uh, we know that we have to find prevent the loss to follow up cases and then free tb treatment regimen is given throughout uh, the state so all these are to bring down the catastrophic expenses for the caregivers as well as for the family so that is what uh, the pillar of treating is dependent on so detect is the first pillar treat is a second pillar the third one is basically prevention so i told you susceptible areas are more focused susceptible people are focused more in order to prevent the emergence of tb in these people and the final or the building is to strengthen the policies institutions human resources like we said strengthening the public private partnership and bringing in all the policies into implementation so that is uh, the pillar of detect treat prevent and build each of these four pillars are important with respect to our uh, next exam so uh, please go through the guidelines and these are the important points okay moving on to the last uh, topic that is the imnci guidelines for pneumonia in uh, children so when you talk about imnci it stands for integrated management of neonatal and childhood illness as all of you know the imnci guideline charts are uh, further divided into uh, charts for children less than 2 months and for children from 2 months to 5 years so here we are talking about what happens if there is um, or how do we classify or uh, go about the imnci treatment guideline for a child who has come with cough or difficulty in breathing those are the usual symptoms when you're suspecting ari or acute respiratory infection in a child so if the child comes with cough or difficult breathing what do we do first of all we have to ask the duration of treatment then count the breaths per minute to identify whether the child is having fast breathing or not okay so fast breathing again it's very important so uh, fast breathing is classified as uh, into three that is less than 60 or uh, uh, sorry greater than 60 greater than 50 and greater than 40 breaths per minute okay breaths per minute this is for children less than two months of age okay and for children from two months to one year and this is for children from one to five years so this you have to know that for a child less than two months more than 60 breaths per minute is abnormal okay what is classified as fast breathing okay fast breathing so this is a cutoff of fast breathing this is important this is a first step in identifying whether a child is having uh, pneumonia or going in for a uh, worse condition of acute respiratory infection okay so uh, we ask for the duration of the symptom we ask we count the breaths per minute then we look for chest in drawing and strider so those are the four points that should be checked okay duration duration is the first one first one is duration second one is fast breathing third one is chest in drawing chest in drawing and the fourth point is basically about strider okay so based on these whether the child has these criteria or not he will be classified okay so after so these are the symptoms and we we look for the signs of pneumonia okay fast breathing chest and drawing and stride. that's what the signs are as written here and then we classify so there are there are no uh, symptoms of fast breathing or there is no chest in drawing there is no strider it means that the child is not having pneumonia the child is having just a cough or cold okay so none of these symptoms no fast breathing no chest in drawing no strider the child is having no pneumonia it's just cough or cold or an upper respiratory infection you can write as the diagnosis now suppose a child is having fast breathing then he classifies into having pneumonia okay classifies into having pneumonia and if the child is having any of the danger signs danger signs would be like convulsions inability to feed okay lethargic okay inability to wake the child is over sleepy unable to wake seizures all these are danger signs if the child has any of these or if the child has child just in drawing 
or strider then the child comes into what is called severe pneumonia or very severe disease okay so there are three classifications uh, for pneumonia in a child who is aged 2 months to 5 years that is no pneumonia pneumonia or very severe pneumonia severe pneumonia so these are the three classifications and according to uh, the classification the child will be treated that is if the child is having cough for more than 30 days then again we have to reassess or else we have to give home remedies for uh, the throat advise the mother uh, the danger signs and that they should follow up and if even if it's not relieved the symptoms are not relieved within five days also the mother has to follow up so those are the things that we do for a child who is just having a cough or cold now, if the child is having pneumonia we start antibiotic basically amoxicillin so for five days and then home remedies are also advised so always follow up advice danger signs advice go hand in hand with any of the cases okay and uh, if it's severe pneumonia we start IV antibiotics that is IV chloramphenicol okay and they have to be referred so that's what is important in IMNC you classify the child into color codes so it can be um, a pink green or yellow coat so if the child is not having any problem it becomes green if the child is having pneumonia it's yellow and if it's severe pneumonia it becomes a red color where we give the initial dose of antibiotic and refer the child so this is the guidelines according to IMNCI for a child two months to five years okay that's classification into no pneumonia pneumonia or very severe disease now if it's a child less than two months anything any fast breathing or any of the symptoms if present it becomes a severe bacterial infection or severe pneumonia so in child less than two months there's only there are only two categories that is either no pneumonia or a very severe disease so that's what that's important and you should remember that okay so that's about imnci guidelines for pneumonia so hope you have understood if you have any queries uh, please uh, feel free to put in the chat box Thank you.